Morning guys, Mark Farash with ProTech Dog Training. We're here with Rocky, Asi, and I've been working Rocky real heavy on a come and a finish, which the finish we're doing is the flip finish. But Rocky is a very high drive dog, and he's very typical of some of these working dogs that you get that are high drive, and you hear about leaking, okay? A personally, opinion is that leaking is basically uh, people that don't take care of it early on and don't um, address it in the right way and really work hard to make sure that the leaking doesn't set in. And when you're going out with Schutzen and your dog's out there and he's watching this stuff on the field and he gets all excited, he starts barking and whining or he's in a drive state that causes that whining and, and leaking behavior, uh, you need to start this stuff early and you need to figure out how you're going to communicate him, to him to be quiet. So one of the things that I'll do is what I call a thousand and one to zero. And this isn't specifically to deal with the leaking, but it is to deal with teaching him to calm. So when I have a dog that's high energy outflow, that's um, very hyper, what I'll do to settle them down is what I call a thousand and one to zero and so I'll show you that now it's one little method to try to teach a dog to calm and I look at it as yin and yang you can't have one without the other and to try to convey a thought to the animal to try to get him to understand what he's doing wrong we need to teach him one before you can teach him the other and you'll see this a lot of times in people teaching you to telling you to teach a dog to bark a lot of times it's easier to teach a dog to be quiet if we teach a dog to bark because now you can relate to what one is uh, opposite of the other and so this thousand and one to zero is, is kind of that same thing so what I'll do OPA is I'll I'll get squirrely on purpose and try to get the dog to bounce up and get he's already been doing this so he's not as prone to do it but I'll try to create the excitement on purpose when the dog gets out of bounds and his drive causes him to get squirrely because I'm acting squirrely I will nip it with a little bit of a correction and I'll say nope and I'll bring my energy level down to zero I call that a thousand and one to zero so hope you eh? good boy good yeah, 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 yeah. Go. yep good and see how I took it down to zero I take my whole being my whole energy level to zero so I'll nip it with a correction I'll go right away into a zero state I'll work very calmly my voice tone will go to zero I'll praise the dog for that zero state I'll give him a reward within the proper uh, ways of doing things with your classical conditioning and operant conditioning and I'll bring it down to zero right after I Good, good. And he, again, he's already had all this stuff done, so he's not getting squirrely like a brand new dog would. And I'll convey the thought to him of going to calm, to another state. Good. Hear my voice tone? Nope. Good. So I wanted to, to kind of point that one out because there's another little mix. There's a bunch of these little things that I put in. Slivers of communication to the dog that address a total problem, which is that leaking. So with him, here, I was having a problem. When I show him the ball, he gets excited. Good. And wants this ball. So if I go here, watch what happens. Oh, yeah. Good, yes. And he didn't do it, but he was getting very hyperactive, well, not hyperactive, but excited. And he was getting into that leaky state of mind, and he was barking. Every time I'd tell him to OPA and to finish, when he had the ball there as his reward, he would start barking. And again, a, very common for a high drive dog to do this sort of thing. Out, nope, nope, out, good, couche. So what I did, Yes, good. I'm going to try to cause the excitement so you guys can see this. Out. Got it. Good boy. Good, good boy. Good. Here. Good. Here. Good, good. Oh, yeah. Nope. Good, yes. He was doing it very, he would bark, bark, bark. He was doing it in total excitement. And so what I did to address it at first is I corrected him and started to do a correction, compulsion. And all that did was create worse of a problem. Good. So I had to back off of that and go to that calm state that I'm talking about. Out. Here. Good. Nope. Nope. There it is. He's getting excited. Nope. Here. Good. Oh, yeah. No. Here. Good. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of blending a correction with a no and a correction and robbing him of his reward. He doesn't get his reward until he does it right. The dog should start looking for what do I need to do to get what I want, which is what he wants. OPA. Yes, good boy. And you see him doing that now. I've already conveyed it and you guys have kind of missed this side of it, but he was barking very heavy to the point where it was really causing a problem. So I had to figure out how do I work the dog through it. So what I did is I started to implement out. Kusha. 
robbing him of his reward, couche, and starting a variable reward type of a procedure. So I'll start phasing in variable reward and start showing him that couche, that he needs to do things right before he gets his reward. And so this was the first instance of that, Asi, where I was actually asking him to be quiet. And I started correcting him, and he started panicking and wanted to bite at me, believe it or not. So I knew that my corrections and compulsion were going to be too much. I need to back that off, and I need to go to another place, which was go to another lo lower state, which was just food. Take the ball out of it. And I did that for a couple days with a here with just food. Oh, yeah. And the drive state changes because he's got food in front of his face versus the ball. Couché. So again, another example of being very aware and cognizant of drive state. It's a very important thing to do, and when you're working with through the dog through some of these problems, being aware of that drive state will help you tremendously. It can be a big benefit to increase drive state, or it can be a detriment because you get a lot of outlet behaviors that are caused by it. Asi, couché. Nope. Good. Asi, couché. Good. Good. Asi, couché. Yes, good boy, good boy. So that was just my little example today. Maybe I can kind of give you a better idea of what that's all about as we go along. But again, 1,001 to zero really works well, but I've got to teach him to go to calm before he can understand it. So I do that and get him on squirrely on purpose. Then I nip it and bring it right back down to zero and go very calm with very slow walking and denote with your energy level what you're after with the dog, which is calmness. Out. And he doesn't, he can't understand couche, his excitement level, he won't be able to understand that until you can show him the opposite side. So again, a yin and a yang. Then you can balance it and he'll understand that he's doing the wrong thing when he gets too excited. Hasi, couche. So we're going to be doing a lot of that with Rocky because he has a propensity to go into that high drive energy level. That's why we did impulse control. That's why we're doing a lot of this little stuff, couche, to try to balance it. So, good. This is Mark Farash with ProTech Dog Training. I'll see you guys later.